Hey, welcome back. And in this section of the video series, we're going to be creating the waterfalls that you see in this image here. So this is a lot of fun to do. And I do this for most of my images where I need very long and tall waterfalls like this. So let's get started. All right. So I did a lot of the detailing and I'm starting to see the need for some like waterfalls possibly. So I'm thinking probably some waterfalls coming from like here and then some of like the top sections over here and then maybe you know, something down here as well. I just really love having the floating rocks with waterfalls kind of falling down from them. Um, it doesn't, of course, really make sense because like where would the water come from? But, you know, it's fantasy art, so whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a few different methods I use when creating waterfalls, just kind of depending on the purpose. And for something like this, I'm not really going to be viewing the waterfall up close or anything. So I'm going to do this procedurally and let me open up a brand new Blender file. All right, so I'm in a new Blender file. This will just make it a little bit easier to work with because we won't have the rest of the scene slowing us down while we create this. Um, let me go into rendered view and I'm just gonna move this character and this. So I'll just get rid of that. So the way we're gonna be doing this is using a curve, a uh, Bezier curve. So I'm gonna go shift A, curve, Bezier curve. And the reason I'm using a curve is it's gonna be, it's gonna make it really easy to be able to just like, you know, modify where the waterfall is going. So basically wherever this curve is, the waterfall is going to be, you know, placed over. So I'm going to actually flatten this out real fast. So I'm going to grab this point, flatten it out. And then I'm going to also rotate this upwards 90 degrees like that. All right, cool. So let's do that. And before I actually do anything else, I'm going to go over here to the curve properties. So the object data properties over here, go to geometry. And if you do extrude, we can actually extrude this out. So basically what we're going to be doing is using this as the geometry for our waterfall. And then we're going to be creating a material over this to just look like a waterfall, essentially. So for now, I'm just going to keep something around here. Let's uh, go into edit mode and then extrude this over here. So E to extrude to create a new point. And let's also rotate this 90 degrees. Cool. There we go. All right. And then let's just pull this down a bit more. So this method is good for like distant waterfalls. If you're wanting something up close, this isn't really going to be the best method. It will it'll look all right and like you'll be able to tell that it's a waterfall, but it won't look great if you're up close. Um, so like it won't look exactly like a real actual waterfall. But from a distance, like something like, you know, this far away, this is perfectly suitable for that. So let's go over here, create a new material on here. So I'm going to actually disconnect this real fast and let's start with a texture coordinate node. So I'm going to go shift a search for texture coordinate. There you go. All right. And then I'm gonna go UV into here so we can see this. So as you can see right here, the curve already has UVs on here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a mask that basically we want to have this red line, both on the right side and the left side, and then the yellow in the center. And we're going to turn it into black and white values essentially so that we can kind of mask out the transparency of the water shader just so it kind of just fades out on the edges. So depending on how comfortable you are with nodes, um, this may or may not be a little bit confusing, but it'll make more sense once we get a few more nodes in here. So what I want to do is go shift a search for separate X, Y, Z, put this right here, and then let's do Y. So Y into surface. So now you can see it's a black and white value. So we still have this line right here. And now let's duplicate the separate X, Y, Z nodes. I'm going to go Control Shift D, so it keeps this input right here. Then I'm going to go Y and just drag out into nothing, so I can type in Color Ramp, Color Ramp. There you go. And what I'm going to be doing here is flipping this, so I can go Flip Color Ramp. And now this is just inverting this separate X, Y, Z. So now I just need to multiply these together with a multiply node. So I'm just going to type in Math put this in here and switch this to multiply. And now you can see we have the inverted and the regular. So the left and right both have the black values kind of fading towards the center. Let me bring in one more color ramp. So I'm just going to duplicate this, put this back to normal. And we can use this one basically to control the fall off right here. So basically, you know, if it's a little bit brighter in the center or a little bit more pushed in, we can do this this way. Um, I kind of want to actually switch this to, yeah, switch this from linear to B spline. This is just going to kind of soften that transition a bit more, as you can see. And this is just going to make the fall off a little bit more kind of subtle or uh, kind of smooth. So something like that, and then we'll brighten the center a bit more. 
something like this. I don't want to see like that harsh kind of cut right there or that harsh line or something. So I think something like that for now is good. It'll get a little bit easier to kind of tell what we need to as well once we actually have, you know, the water material made for this. But for now, this is good. So we have our mask. And then now let's do this. So let's bring back over our principled. And this is going to be basically like the foam. This is a very basic kind of material we're going to be creating. Because um, as I mentioned, we're going to be seeing this from far away. So we don't really actually need anything too crazy. But let's just kind of do this, uh, this white material like this. Maybe a bit more roughness. Okay. Um, let's actually rotate this. I'm going to rotate this over here. That way we just have some light on here. So it's just a little bit easier to see kind of what we're doing on here as opposed to it just being in the shadow. All right, so this is probably suitable enough for foam. We don't really need really anything too crazy. Let's duplicate this though. So let's just go Shift D to duplicate this. Let's create our water material now. For this, let's make something slightly blue. So something like this. I'm gonna change, I'll probably change this a little bit more once we actually get the waterfall made. But for now, I'll just keep it kind of like this very desaturated light blue. Let's put the roughness down to something very low, so it's pretty reflective. As you can see, it's kind of hard to tell right now, but you can see it's pretty shiny right now. And then transmission. And then that's going to make it a lot more water-like. All right, cool. So we have that. Let's use a mix shader now. So mix, mix shader, and put that here. And then let's see. Actually, I think I have to flip these. Let's flip these over here. So that. Cool. So that. And then that. So now we can just mix these together now. All right, so now zero is going to be the foam, as you can see, and then one is going to be the water. Okay, so now we can use a noise texture to basically just randomly choose, you know, where we're gonna use both of these materials on this object. So I'm just gonna drag out from factor and then type in noise, noise texture. And let's also do a color ramp. So color ramp so that we can kind of control the fall off of this. And let's also use color instead of factor. So we have that, cool. And then also um, here, I think, yeah, if we crunch this in a little bit, you're gonna see, we can actually kind of control that fall off. So we can actually see there's foam and water kind of being mixed in randomly. Let's go from UV into vector. And this is going to stretch it out just a bit. And then let's up the detail, just with a bit more detail and maybe some roughness as well, just to kind of, you know, make it a bit more roughened up. Here, let's try this. Okay. So one more node we need is the separate color node. So in between these two nodes, let's do shift A, separate, separate color. Drop this here and let's set this from RGB to HSV. And now you can see we get this kind of sharper kind of transition with these like kind of smudge marks. And I find this works a little bit more nicely for water. So this is okay for now. Um, we need one more thing over here now. So we have these mixing, but we don't have our mask anymore, kind of fading out these edges. So let's duplicate this mix shader node. And what we can do is let's actually put this on the bottom one. And then up here, we're gonna use a transparent VSDF. So now we have zero for transparent and then one for the waterfall material. Let's use this as the factor. And now we can see we have this mask. So it's a bit subtle right now, just because the colors on here are very kind of soft. This white value is kind of like a light gray or something or like a dark gray. So we just need to use a multiply node just so we can kind of make that a bit brighter as you can see. So something like, I don't know, five-ish or so. I think that works pretty well. And yeah, now you can see we have this kind of fall off. So without it, and then with it, we're just kind of getting rid of that hard line on the edges. So I found that works pretty well. Now we can just kind of adjust the rest of these kind of uh, waterfall material properties. So I'm just gonna up the scale a bit. Kind of crunch that in more. All right, I think something like that. Okay, so we have this, and then let's also add a bit of bump to the normal. So we can use a bump node. So bump, put this into normal for both of these. And then from the noise texture, let's just do color into height. 
and now we're going to have the bump map showing. So let's lessen the strength quite a bit. So let's like maybe do 0.2 or so. And that just adds a little bit more depth here. All right, cool. So this is pretty much done. Um, what we can do, though, to animate this is we can actually use a mapping node. So let's just type in mapping. And with the X location, we can actually control the movement of this waterfall. So if I go into the negatives, it actually animates falling down. So let's just animate this with a value. And let's just do like hashtag frame slash 240, because that's what I use for my animations, 240 frames. If I click play, it's running kind of slow right now, but if I actually go into the material preview, it should go a little bit faster. Cool. Um, it looks like it's actually going negative though. I need to go the other way. Um, let's just do this here. Let's just bring in a math node. Multiply, and then also let's do combine x, y, z. And then now it's only going on the x axis. And let's just flip this. So let's just go a negative value on the multiply. And yeah, now we can get the speed of this with this multiply. Yeah, so now you can see the farther we go in here, the faster the waterfall goes. So I'm going to do something kind of like maybe negative five. I think negative five is OK. It's a little bit grainy because of the material preview, but we can still see the speed pretty well. All right. Yeah, so I think that works pretty well. I'm going to go back into rendered view. And one last thing I like to do, um, this is definitely optional, but this kind of helps add a little bit of depth. I'm just going to go over here to the modifiers, add modifier. And let's go to generate solidify. And solidify is just going to basically add some depth to this. And it stays kind of hollow in the center for this just because the you know like the edges are faded out and that's perfectly fine just because as i've mentioned a few times we're going to be viewing this from far away we're not going to actually see any of that um, this is kind of why this is only good for you know distant shots of waterfalls not anything up close just because it is a little bit messy but it does get the job done pretty well so i'm going to go a little bit smaller on here something like that and then maybe duplicate this one more time bring this out a little bit more. And I'm just kind of layering this just so there's less of a gap over here. Cool. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to mess with the color now just because now we have more layers. So the color is a little bit more kind of darkened. So let's go something like this. There we go. Great, so I think that looks good. So I'm just going to rename this to Waterfall, and then I'm just gonna Control C, go back into Shaded View, and then just start placing this around my, my scene, most likely just the uh, floating rock. But yeah, let's see if we can get this to work. Um, I'm pretty sure this is what I want in here. I may or may not keep the Waterfall, so we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I'm just gonna start placing this around, kind of coming off of this floating rock. All right, so I'm choosing the collection that I want to import this into and then also moving the 3D cursor to the front of the floating rock just so I can spawn the waterfall right there. So now I just basically got to just scale this, rotate this, and position this into place wherever I think looks best. I am moving the origin point to the top of the waterfall just to make it a little bit easier to position and rotate. So I have these platforms that I made on the cliff, so I figured that would be a really good place to start with putting the waterfalls. I did realize the saturation is still too high, so I just lowered that in the material. And then I also got rid of that second solidify just to make it a little bit less thick because it was a bit too much in this case. So I'm just kind of scaling this, rotating this, and trying to find a good position for this. I am about to go into the curve settings and mess with the extrude so it's a little bit thinner. And then I also duplicated this and actually made an even thinner version to make kind of like a stream version. And I feel this looks pretty good to have like a big waterfall and then like some like small streams beside it. So in the original recording, OBS actually ended up cutting out for some reason, and it stopped recording that this last part of the process. But luckily, all it was was me just basically duplicating around the waterfall a few times. We already got this part situated in the video. The rest was just me putting the waterfalls in these other locations. So pretty simple. Um, one thing I do want to go over was how I got this kind of fading effect. As you can see, the waterfall actually fades out as it gets closer to the ground. And this is because of this empty right here. So let me actually just solo these out real fast. All right, so these are soloed out right now. And 
basically what I did here too is, as you can see, when I move this around, we're actually controlling the transparency of this waterfall. And the reason I did this was because well, if you look at a lot of like very tall waterfalls, like pretty much the kinds that you're seeing right here, they're much more dense at the top. They sometimes kind of start like fading out towards the bottom just because, you know, some of the water will start turning to mist and kind of just, you know, it will just fade out a bit. So I'm mimicking that effect with this empty right here. All right. So inside of here, this is pretty simple. Um, I actually just duplicated this mix shader and transparent bsdf so if you remember you know the transparent bsdf is just going to be fully transparent and then in this slot right here is going to be showing fully the waterfall pretty much the same thing right here it's just that the factor now is getting controlled by this empties location so i brought in this texture coordinate and we have this set to object right here and the object that we're using is this empty which this is the empty right here so wherever this empty is, it's controlling the factor right here. So I just have length. So this is a vector math set to length. And this is just basically the length from this empty object. And then multiply. Multiply is just controlling the strength. So you can see right here, this just controls the strength of this effect and like how far out it goes. And then the color ramp is the fall off. So yeah, pretty simple process and pretty easy to do. So yeah, um, what else was lost in the video was just me placing the waterfalls around. So pretty easy, you know, just duplicating this and then just using the move and rotate tools to figure out, you know, other good positions. So this wraps it up for the waterfall section. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to NVIDIA Studio's YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Um, the next video in this series is going to cover the kind of final steps of just finishing up the 3D section of this project. So just kind of going through, double checking everything, doing the very last kind of minimal details to make sure everything just looks perfect before I move on to the post-processing stage and actually finishing the entire render. <laughs>